Good morning everyone and welcome to the preview of the 2022 World Championships, which this year take place in Wollongong, Australia, from the 18th to the 25th of September, precisely the two days of the races we are going to talk about, the Elite Men's Time Trial and Road Race. In this video we will discuss the most notable absence for this World Cup, the route of both disciplines and the main favourites and outsiders for each race, in a ranking of 5 stars to 1. First of all, remember that a like and a subscription always help, and that you have available in the channel the video with the ranking and analysis of the teams of the Vuelta a España, in case you haven't seen it and you are interested. Now, let's get on with the video. We start with the absence, and there are many stars and cyclists of good level who will not make the trip to Australia and their national teams have been clearly affected. I leave a link in the description to the full list of participants in the Elite Men's World Cup in Procycling Stats. We start this list with Spain, one of the teams most affected by the fights at the top and the bottom of the UCI ranking, and that brings a low level selection. On the one hand, Ineos supposedly wouldn't let Jonathan Castroviejo or Omar Fraile leave the team, and on the other, we have Movistar and Cofidis. Valverde declared his sorrow at not being able to represent Spain one last time, and Aramburu and others will not be traveling either. Cofidis, which is in a much more compromised position in the ranking, didn't allow Jesus Herrera and Yunis Aguirre to make the trip. If you add to this the absence of Peyo Bilbao or Luisle and the fact that Ayuso, Spain's best asset, would not be in Australia due to physical and mental fatigue after the Vuelta, then that's it. He will be replaced by Garcia Cortina from Movistar, who was marked as the first replacement for the national team in case of a last-minute withdrawal. We continue with Belgium, which will not take the Lotus Sudal men, highlighting the Lee for the under-23 race and Campenards and Velens for the elite, although the latter wouldn't have come anyway because of his heart problems. This Benut is also missing because of the accident he suffered while training in Livigno at the beginning of August, and the Belgian coach did not call Dylan Teuns, who was very disappointed with the decision as the World Cup was a big goal for him and he said he would not have minded working for Van Aert or Evenepoel. There are also many riders who will not defend the French tricolor, as Benoit Cosnefroy, who could have been one of the big favourites after his recent victory in Quebec, already warned Voeckler at the French Championships that he was not convinced about travelling to Australia. Two FDG riders, David Godou, who did very well in Montreal, and Thibaut Pinot will not be there either, as both have other objectives. And Guillaume Martin, Benjamin Thomas and Warren Barril will not be there either, as Cofidis and Arkea need to secure their points. Denmark will not be able to count on its two bigger stars, Mats Pedersen and Jonas Vingego. The former has a lot of race days already in his back, and Vingego struggled with the pressure of the media and others after his victory in the Tour, and he chose to focus only on Lombardy. Kasper Aswin, who has already closed his 2023 season due to fatigue, and Sore Kra Andersen with saddle sore, will not be in the squad either. The UK will be without the Yates brothers, with Adam preferring to return to Europe and ride the Italian classics after his top 10s in Canada. Tom Pitcott will also be absent, with fatigue already making it impossible for him to develop another pit form. In the host team, Australia, we have to highlight the absence of Caleb Ewan, who wasn't selected, and Rohan Dennis, who had to say no because of his brother's wedding a day before the time trial. Tari Pogacar in Slovenia would be without Primo Roglic after his crash in the Vuelta, from which he is recovering quietly, and Matej Mohoric, who is recovering from the Epstein-Barr virus. The USA has been forced to call up a couple of unknown riders due to the accumulated absences of Quinn Simmons and Brandon McNulty due to fatigue and Matteo Jorgensen due to the points issue, although Movistar is practically saved. Let's turn now to Ecuador and Colombia. Ecuador will only have one elite rider, Jonathan Narvaez, despite having six places in the men's race, as the Ecuadorian Federation stated that Many of our best riders cannot be part of the team due to physical and or family problems. A pity not be able to enjoy Carapaz in the World Cup, as well as Daniel Felipe Martinez, Uran and Chavez with Colombia, as their teams are fighting in the UCI ranking. Other squads that we can highlight are Germany, which won't be able to count on Max Walscheid in the time trial, 
Canada without Michael Woods and Hugo Uhl or Poland, which will not have Michal Kwiatkowski in the worst season of his life, full of health problems despite his victory in the Amstel Gold Race. We also have Dumoulin, whose last objective before retiring was the time trial at these World Championships, but opted instead to pull the curtain down early. Alexander Blasov won't be in Australia due to the current conflict between Russia and Ukraine, and we finish with the Irish team, which will not be present in Australia due to the economic effort involved in the trip and the lack of guarantee of success, and with New Zealand, of which it had been rumored that its cyclists based in Europe would have to pay part of the trip. For this reason and others, Sam Bailey and George Bennett will be missing, and others too. Let's go now to the men's road race, which, as usual, will close these World Championships and will be held on the 25th of September. It presents an undulating route of 276 kilometers that will end up being very explosive and selective, with more than 4,000 meters of elevation gain. We can divide the route into three different sections. A first one from Helensburg, skirting the Australian coast with an initial descent followed by an uneven but uncomplicated terrain to the center of Wollongong and the start of the Mount Kira Loop, a climb of 8.7 kilometers with an average gradient of 5% and a couple of peaks of 14 and 15. The climb would only be done once and even if a team makes a big effort and wants to put the rest in trouble, it should not be very decisive being placed 200 kilometers from the finish line. Its descent gives way to a short, flattish terrain after which we reach the final circuit of 17 kilometers in the city of Wollongong. The riders will do 12 laps and the main highlight is the central part with his heels. The first is Mount Owsley, just over a half a kilometer at 7% average. The second is Mount Pleasant, which lasts 900 meters at 10% with a max gradient of 15 and after a short descent, there's Broker's Road, just 100 meters, also at 10%, with a final part, a final segment that could exceed 20%. After the descent, the rest of the course is only a couple of kilometers flat and has 11 roundabouts and 9 90 degree bends. At first glance, it looks like an ideal track for people like Mathieu van der Poel or Pogacar, able to respond 100% on steep slopes and with short but super explosive efforts. If you want to see a detailed analysis of the course, I leave a link in the description to a Twitter thread that shows it in detail. We begin the analysis of the favorites with the five-star cyclist, Wout van Aert. This year, he has decided to focus on the road and will not take part in the time trial. If he is able to withstand all the attacks, he will be the one to watch at the finish. It should be remembered that his sprint is sometimes not the strongest after many efforts, as was seen in Montreal, or the most intelligent, as in Hamburg. If he is as good as he was in the Tour, few will be able to match him. One star below I have placed Tari Pogacar and Mathieu van der Poel. The Slovenian is rested after the Tour and showed in Montreal that he is in very good shape. This circuit suits him well. We have already seen him be decisive in all kinds of classics and if he doesn't get rid of his rivals on the climbs, his sprint after more than 2000 km is superlative. Another big favorite is Mathieu van der Poel. After a disappointing Tour de France, the Dutchman preferred to take it easy for the World Championships and has only participated in four races, winning the GP Wallonie against Binem Girmay. He seems to be in good shape and has a very strong group, so he is a serious candidate for the rainbow jersey. Let's go now to the three star favorites, and we start with the winner of the Vuelta a España, Evenepoel. Renko is the other leader of the Belgian team and we'll have to see how well he responds after three weeks of hard work. Be careful with his attacks with dozens of kilometers to go, they are his speciality in the classics. Another big name is Biniam Girmay, who hopes to crown his incredible 2022 with a great performance at the World Cup. His big weakness is that he'll be isolated early on, as his teammates are not up to the standard. And as the main French asset, I have placed Valentin Madois. He will arrive in Australia in great form, as his recent victories in Dobbs and Luxembourg testify. He may not have the cachet of others, 
but he has already proven to be very versatile. The last of this group is Michael Matthews, the main weapon of the host team, who will have that extra edge, that extra motivation. Matthews says he is in even better shape than he was at the tour, and his best chance is a regrouping before the finish. We start the group of two stars with the current world champion, Julien Lafilippe, who will have a very, very difficult time to repeat his triumph of the last two years. His grass in the Vuelta would prevent him from reaching 100% top form, and there were doubts about his presence until a week before the opening of the World Cup. Colombia's hopes lie with the duo of Nairo Quintana and Sergio Higuita. The former has been out of racing for some time due to the Trovado men's, while Higuita finished the Vuelta strong and could do well at this World Cup. Watch out for Fred Wright and Ethan Hayter, the two British options, who will have their best chance with an early move, trying to filter into intermediate groups. And also, with two stars, I have placed the two Italian leaders, Andrea Bajoli, with a great performance in Montreal and being quite fast, and Alberto Betiol, who will have to filter in early moves. The last two-star rider is Joao Almeida, who will have to hold his own at his own pace and will be surrounded by the three Oliveiras. And we finish with the last outsiders, the one-star runners. We can start with the Swiss, who with Stefan Kahn and Mauri Schmidt could filter in some early attacks. We also have Nilsson Paules and Magnus Sheffield for the US, but we will have to see how well Paulus is after a crash he suffered a couple of days ago. Jan Polank and Jan Traknik could also act as satellite riders for Pogacar, as could Quinten Hermans for the two Belgian leaders, Molema and Van Barle second last year for Mathieu van der Poel and Hindley and O'Connor for Michael Matthews. Narvaez, as the only Ecuadorian representative, will have to go at it alone. The Spaniards, Marc Soler and Ivan Garcia Cortina could have a chance, as could Lutsenko for Kazakhstan, although it will be very difficult. Andreas Legnesund should be the leader of the Norwegian team, which brings Christoph to see how he wriggles, how he struggles on the climbs. Magnus Kort and Jacob Fausland lead the Danes, although perhaps Honoré will be more prominent in the end. We can also highlight others from the French nine, with Romain Bardet, Pavel Sivakov, Christophe Laporte, and Quentin Pachert. And we finish with Peter Sagan, who should be mentioned out of respect, as his season has not exactly been good and he comes after two retirements due to illness in the Canadian double. The immense time trial will be held on the opening day, the 18th of September, after the lead women's time trial, and will have the same route through the suburbs of Wollongong. There are two laps of a 17km course, so it will end up being 34 kilometers long, which is a bit short, as one could have expected 45 or even 50 kilometers, but it's not a flat course at all. It is full of small up and downs, including Mount Osley, which is a repeat of the road race, and it is also a technical circuit with many bends, so there will be no super long sections except at the end, where the best specialists will be able to start their engines for several kilometers in a row. Will Pipo Gana be able to retain his title of the last two years? He won't have to cope with Wolf Van Aert, and although this year he has been defeated in several time trials, I have to place him as the top favorite. If he was to win, he would join a very limited club of world time trial winners in three consecutive years, joining Michael Rogers and Tony Martin. However, the course seems to be better suited to others, and he won't have little competition. His main rivals, the four-star favorites will be a Belgian and a Slovenian. Starting with the Belgian, it's Renko Evonepoel, who has dominated this year's TT in the Vuelta and the one of the Belgian Championships. Will he be able to improve on his bronze from last year and silver from 2019? It will depend on how he feels after the Vuelta, but he has the rainbow jersey in his grasp if he maintains peak form. And the Slovenian is Tari Pogacar. He has yet to win in this discipline this year, and it is true that in the only world time trial at this level in which he has taken part last year, he finished 10th, but no one can doubt his ability and gets the clock, and he is in very good shape. Let's go now to several riders who will fight for the places of honor, possibly even the podium, the three star favorites. The first two in this category are the Swiss duo of Stefans, Kung and Visiger. The latter took the duel by less than a second at the European Championships, 
We'll see if Bissiger continues his streak in Wollongong or if he's once again deterred by the crisis and bad luck of the tour. And although Stefan Kung hasn't ridden the best time trials this year with a single victory in Poitou Charente against second tier rivals, he will certainly be in the medal hand and could spring a surprise. The other Belgian in this competition is Yves Lampard. His two more notable victories are the prologue of the Tour de France and the time trial of the Tour de Belgique. And even though both of those two routes were completely flat and short, he is sure to be there. The next one is Remy Cavagna, who although he lost in the French Championship against Army Rail and has not done very good time trials this year, it is good that the exception is precisely the one in the Vuelta España, where he finished third. Boke Molema has earned the right to be in this top group, as the discovery of his ability in the time trial this year is magnificent and he will finish in the top 10. We begin the two-star category with two Aeneas men. Magnus Sheffield, who won in Denmark and came second in Poland in two completely different profiles, and Ethan Hader, who has also had good performances in the time trial this year, although his status is an unknown after withdrawing from the Volta for Covid. Joao Almeida could also do well, but let's hope he doesn't get it wrong this time as he did in the Volta España time trial. And completing this group is the second Italian rider, Matteo Sobrero of Bike Exchange. We finish with the riders who could finish in the lower part of the top 10. Here we have two Danes, Magnus Kort Nielsen and Mikkel Bjerg, the French champion Bruno Armirail, Eduardo Fini, who completes the Italian trio, although the profile is too undulating for him, the Norwegian duo of Tobias Foss and Andreas Legnesson, whom I will trust much more than the first and Poland's Maciek Botnar. And here ends this preview of the lead men's road and time trial races. I'd say Pogacar wins the road race and Evenepoel takes the time trial. What do you say? I hope you liked the video and if you did, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.